Welcome everyone. Today I am going to show you how to unlock the Final Fantasy 15 car in Final Fantasy 14. I know a lot of you have seen them driving around, so I'm here to help. More after the intro. But welcome everyone. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna go into your recommendations and try to find the Men in Black mission. It's a little bit harder to find since the mission is in blue, but you can use that to help you find it. Afterwards, you're gonna end up talking to Keepa Jaka all the way over here by these steps. Um, she will be the one that will give you the mission that you need. Afterwards, it'll trigger some dialogue and she'll send you to Central Thanalin where you go actually meet up with Noctis. Noctis is actually stuck in Eorzea due to something that happened to him during Final Fantasy 15. Afterwards, he'll trigger more dialogue and he will send you over to this location where you'll be looking for the fate like clockwork. Uh, this fate will actually be your first time that you'll get the opportunity to fight with Noctis, which he will use his fighting style from Final Fantasy 15, which is awesome. Sorry, I had to do that. But yeah, uh, it'll be another battle. It'll lower your level down to 50 if you're on a higher level, so keep that in mind. Especially if you're playing like classes like Dark Knight or even Red Mage. So keep that in mind. You might want to use a different class than what I did in the video here. After the battle, the game will have you meet up with Noctis again at the following location right here. This will actually trigger another cutscene which will help you get into the second mission back in Ulda. Afterwards, head back to Ulda, and there you will meet up with Noctis and Keepa at that location where you got the original first mission, over by the steps. They will eventually send you to Old Gridania, where you will have to go speak to three random um, NPCs in order to get the next part of the mission. Basically, you're just gathering information on what's going on to help Noctis get back home. Afterwards, the game will send you back to meet up with Noctis and Keepa over here at this location. Uh, this will trigger another conversation between you and the said person. And this will send you out into the wilderness where you'll trigger a cutscene between you and Noctis where you'll end up fighting one of the demons or dark monsters from Final Fantasy XV. He's not too hard, but as you can see, uh, the game starts throwing mechanics at you. Some of the mechanics at which you won't, like most of you, if you're earlier in the game, probably haven't seen these. But if you're like in Stormblood, you'll start to see some of these, like the lines across the, the way and everything where you have to stand in between them and things like that. You'll see those in Stormblood, so be prepared for that. After this, you will be sent into a cutscene allowing your main character to enjoy delicious rice balls around the campfire with Noctis as you reminisce about the battle, similar to Final Fantasy XV. After this point, you guys will finally unlock the final mission well, back in Gridania at this location. So speak to Noctis in order to trigger the cutscene. Eventually, Keepa will notify your main character that the Beastmen are attempting to summon uh, Garuda again. So you and Noctis are going to have to go and take care of her in order to, you know, stop that from happening. Similar to how, you, they, you know, they do with the primals in the story mode. Now, this version of Garuda is a little bit different, as you guys can see. But the boss fight itself isn't too difficult uh one of the big things to take away from it is noctis actually gives you a portion of his power so you'll get a new command like if you're using controller like i was using you'll get the press the r3 button and actually be able to dash in similar to how noctis would fight on final fantasy 15. so some of the mechanics from this fight to talk about uh one thing you'll notice is that there are multiple pillars of rocks hanging around the battlefield as you attack Garuda. Uh, 
Uh, the big thing to take away from that is, as you can see, Garuda will sometimes tr uh, teleport in front of one of the rocks and do a ginormous AoE attack. When I was fighting her, I thought she was supposed to use Warp Strike to at, the, like, at the right time in order to try to dodge the attack, but that's not what you're supposed to do. Uh, what you'll see later on in the fight is you're technically supposed to aim at one of the pillars off in the distance and use that to teleport out of the AoE attack. And then eventually what happens is you come back and you'll trigger a Link Strike with Noctis that does a shit ton of damage. Another thing to remember with Warp Strike 2 is the further away that you are from Garuda, the more damage the attack will do. So you can use that to hit her for about 2,000 damage if you want to. Uh, eventually she'll change her mechanics up and she'll do like this gravity type attack. Uh, just kind of like dodge in a circle. But if you're using like a tank like I was, you can use tank stance to pull her out of it. But as you can see, Noctis is like trapped in here. He'll just keep doing his attacks over and over again. Um, eventually, after a while, you'll get to a new mechanic in the fight where she will go into the middle and she will do like a, I want to call it like a trapping move, right? So what this does, this will trigger a, a button slash quick time event where you'll have to mash the, the X button or mash the button, whatever your button is that you would click for in order to try to break out of it. You have about 12 seconds, so it's not too difficult. But by doing it, this will trigger the final cutscene where Noctis will eventually kill her using the powers of cutscenes. You know, you know how it goes with these Final Fantasy type games. You know, the cutscene is always going to finish off the enemy because that makes it so much more flashy. Now, with the duty complete, Garuda will actually open the portal back to the Final Fantasy 15 world, allowing Noctis to return home, which is good for him. But at this point, you're like, where's my car? Like, dude, where's my car? Well, after you finish all of these these uh, missions, you'll actually have to go to the gold saucer and near the main area where you will buy everything at. Like, you know how they um, they have like all the, the vendors and stuff. Well, if you go over there, you will see a ironworks vendor at this location. Uh, what's special about him is he has three items, but what you're going to want is the 200,000 uh, mount, which is the car. I'm also planning on getting the Noctis card because it's not that expensive to get. But if you guys want to in unlock this uh, in order to unlock the points, what you're going to have to do is I recommend doing the fashion report missions because they give the most amount of points and you still have about maybe about a week or two in order to unlock it. So that's at least, you could probably get like 120,000 between this week and next week if you did the, if you did it today. But that's pretty much it, you guys. I hope uh, you were able to utilize this video in order to get your car mount. Like I said, this is a limited time event. So don't wait and do it too late because you definitely wanna have this mount because it's a four person mount, which is, you're not gonna get that in the story mode. So if you're a sprout like me, this was my second multi-person mount, but this is the only mount that I have right now that I can carry multiple people with. Uh, but if you like this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you would like to watch my Final Fantasy live plays, please join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at around 5, 5.30 Pacific time as we play this game. But thank you everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Peace.